Here I have some agarose. Agarose is purified seaweed. So this is basically a protein that can form a long polymer. And I'm going to measure this out. I want 0.8 grams. Halfway there. This will be a little more than I want. Five, six, seven. Notice that this is a biology class, not a chemistry class. So I got 0.85 when I was looking for 0.8. I'm looking to make a solution of about 2%. And then the DNA is going to move through this agarose uh, solution once it's solidified um, based on how thick the solution is. The key is, though, that the only thing I care about is that the DNA spreads out by size. The longer pieces of DNA will get caught on the matrix and move more slowly than the short pieces. So whether I added half this much agarose or twice this much agarose, Either way, I would still form a matrix that would slow down the larger pieces of DNA more than it slows down the smaller pieces of DNA. So I've got a solution called TAE, it's tris acetic acid, uh, and EDTA. And I want about 40 mils of this solution. Okay. So I'll measure out. Again, I got a little bit over 0.8 grams, and so a little bit over 40 mils will be perfect here. Perfect. White chalky solution. What I'm going to do now is microwave this. So what I'm doing is melting the agarose powder into a liquid form where when it cools, the polymers of agarose fibers will form a meshwork that the DNA needs to travel through. So we can do about 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds, do that two or three times so that we heat it up gradually, but enough that it, might, that it heats up, but it doesn't boil over. We want it to get to the point of boiling to make sure that all of the agarose is dissolved, but we don't want it to boil over. So when this is done in the microwave, I'll sh uh, actually let's hold on a second, and here it's going to come out. Let's see. It has started boiling. I'm using what I like to call the grabber grabbers, so that I can hold this. Why don't you get a close-up here. Can you see the air bubbles in there? And can you see how there's still whitish at the bottom, but there's lots of particles still in there. So this has started to boil, but all these little dots all over the place in the, on the glass and in the liquid are the unmelted agarose particles. So now we'll put it back in and we'll microwave it until it's completely clear. So now you can see that the liquid is completely clear. That clear liquid is, contains completely dissolved agarose. And of course, this is much too hot to hold without the grabber grabbers. Thank you. That way I don't burn my hand. Especially this was hot enough to the point where it was boiling uh, quite vigorously. So now I'm going to let it uh, cool for just a few minutes, maybe five minutes, um, such that I can pick this up with my hand and touch the part that was just boiling and not burn myself. At that point, we'll get ready for the next step. So here's our melted agarose. It is still completely liquid. I do not wait long enough for it to solidify and cool. It's just cooled enough that I can hold it without burning my fingers, right? So it's no longer boiling. At this point, I can add our fluorescent dye. This allows us to see the DNA under um, a UV light, and therefore we'll be able to take pictures of it as this molecule, this red fluorescent molecule, fluoresces. See the red? And I will add that and swirl it around, making sure that our ethidium bromide, that's not ethidium bromide, sorry, that's the toxic version. This is just a fluorescent dye that it's called Cyber Safe. And we now have a slightly pinkish gel liquid. I'm going to use that in this um, gel casting tray. It has nice rubber sides here and I'm going to pour my liquid into a gel boat. These are the gel boats we've used in genetics. 
um, so it should look familiar. This holds about 40 mils of liquid, and that's what I've made here. What I do is I lift this up, bring it in until the rubber is tight against the sides, and tighten it down. If I wanted to make a bigger gel, because I wanted to separate out the sizes of DNA more, 1,000 at the top, 500 at the middle, 200 at the bottom, I wanted to spread out large pieces of DNA from each other, I could have used maybe 80 mils of this liquid and cast it in a larger gel boat. So here's my small gel boat. I've got the Athidium, uh, sorry, this is CyberSafe. I, I, in my graduate work, I always used Athidium bromide, which is not safe. Uh, so I'm very glad that we now have CyberSafe. It's quite an advance in technology. I'll pour this in, and before it cools enough to become, become completely solid, like making jello, which is just gelatin fibers melted uh, to make uh, polymers, and when it cools in the fridge, uh, you get uh, a gel. We're making a gel here. I'll move, remove the bubbles, and I'll place this comb. The comb has slots in it. The slots will have gel between them. The place where it's plastic on the combs will displace the agro liquid. So that when I pull this out after it has solidified, there will be wells, there will be holes in the gel. I will then take our PCR product that we just uh, finished up on the PCR machine and add those to each of these wells so, and, um, uh, and then we'll be able to separate those DNA fragments by length by moving them through the matrix of the agarose.